on this beautiful holiday in this lovely holy sanctuary in this beautiful wonderful holy confirmation service to be this day with you all i want to love to say a big glory hallelujah to the lord jesus for giving me this joy and the privilege to worship with you all and to confirm 10 of these children and to bring God's word. All glory and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. Secondly, I would really, you know, would love to say big thanks to the Chairman Richard, Reverend Richard, and to Reverend Anita, the Presbyters of this church, and to the Secretary and to the Treasurer for inviting me to be here this evening and to confirm this lovely young ones. So thanks to them, Reverend Richard and Reverend Anita. Thank you so much for accounting me worthy to confirm these lovely children. We have in our midst this evening the Dyson Secretary, Reverend Augustine Ayah. In fact, I need to really thank him threefold because right from morning, you know, he has been with the various confirmation services and it was spelled out that this is the third one today. And he has been right from morning with me. And the blessing was he was my translator in the other two services where it was in Tamil. And God has mercy, had mercy on him, you know, this being an English service. I would really love to say a big congratulations, a hearty congratulations to the compliments. Compliments, hearty congratulations. You might be wondering, like, why did Bishop say hearty congratulations? He could have just gone with the word congratulations. Now, soon after the worship, naturally, you know, everybody would come and say, congratulations, congratulations. But my very purpose of saying hearty congratulations has two fold things in this. One is naturally because you got confirmed. Secondly, for me to really congratulate you for taking a decision in your life and answer to the question that when I asked you, do you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior and the savior of the world? And your decision was, I do. I want to say in a hearty congratulations for that. Because there might have been many decisions in your life. The decisions, some, some of them went wrong. Some decisions might have broken you. Some decisions in your life made you feel, you know, unhappy. Some decisions you might have felt, why did I on earth ever I took this decision? And some decisions might have even made your parents go through sleepless nights. Might have wet their beds with their tears. Not only the parents of this world, but even some decisions in your young life might have made even the Lord Jesus, you know, feel sad. Why did my daughter, why did my son did ever take this kind of decision? But your young ones, If there, are, if there is a decision that made Jesus happy and your lovely parents rejoice, it is this decision. This is a decision. I can say this is the best, they're not good, not better. But this is the best decision that you ever made in your life. And that's the reason why I said, honey, congratulations. This decision that you made 
is the one that made your lovely parents happy. And if somebody can a person like me, if if uh, if they ask you, is there a day that you made Jesus happy? Do you have in your faith journey that you have a day that you made Jesus happy? Now you can say the day I confirmed on my confirmation day, the decision that I made is the day that I made Jesus rejoice. And also the angels and the archangels are praising because of your lovely decision that you took this evening. So what a wonderful day. A day that you got in your life journey. A day that you made Jesus happy. No wonder there were many times, many days, many ways that you made Jesus unhappy. Going to places that Jesus never wanted you to go, not to be there. You might have said so many things which Jesus never wanted you to say those, not Jesus wanted to ever hear those. You might have done so many things which Jesus never wanted you to do those. But today, this day what you said, I do. Is the word that made heaven happy to me. And I would love to say, you have made this decision, never turn back. What may come in your life, even if it has to, it costs your life, don't go back. Because this is a decision that you took, not just for today. Because you are going to be confirmed. Cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back, no turning back, no turning back, no turning back. The whole world is me, still I will follow. The whole world is me. Still I will follow, the whole world is me, still I will follow, no turning back, no turning back, no turning back, no turning back. My dear young confirmants, this is not a song because you know your sign. Nor I sang because I know the song. Because I sang this chorus. For you who made a decision in your life should never turn back. Even if the whole world leaves you, still you follow Jesus Christ. And in this juncture, I remember Pastor made everybody clap for the country. Am I correct? And you all clapped? Compliments. Really how blessed you are. To be honored with such a lovely applause. Because you are the celebrities of this day. But I want to make a couple of people very important for you in your life. You promise so many things today. I do, I do, I do. When you were a small little baby, after you were born, your parents when they brought you to the church for the first time, they also promised to the Lord something. And that promise was, Lord, I will bring up this child in your faith where they would accept you as their personal savior. And today, Lord in the heaven, the angels in the heaven are rejoicing and your lovely parents are also rejoicing because your parents are such a wonderful parents. I do not know how far you really recognize your parents, how great they are. 
They may not be as beautiful as you, as handsome as you. They may not know have the wisdom and intelligence and knowledge the way that you can operate the gadgets. And sometimes you may think, oh, my dad or my mama do not know anything in this world. Well, friends, children, they may not know many things that you do not, you know. But one thing they know, that is to bring you up as a daughter of Jesus and the son of Jesus Christ. Where you could accept today in your life, Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Such a wonderful parents they are. So, God has given you such a beautiful parents. I always, you know, tell wherever I go, whether this country or any country I travel, I always say, God blessed me with a lovely mother and a lovely father. I tell, from this day, I want you all compliments to, to tell the whole world. That's how lovely mommy and daddy God has blessed you with. Who could bring you up, who could rear you up in the faith where you could confess in the midst of so many people that do you accept Jesus as a savior? Without shame, without fear, you all could say, I do. How could you say this? Because the way your mommy and daddy brought you up. My mother told me about Jesus to me. Right from the day, even when I do not know even the spelling of Jesus, nor I can spell out Jesus, I know that my mother held my hands together and made me to put my hands this way and made me to repeat some things which I never knew. A prayer to Jesus. She told me about Jesus. My daddy showed me Jesus. My daddy showed me Jesus. Well, by the time I realized this fact, my dad went to be with the Lord. But I could not say, I love you, daddy. But today, confidence, you are so blessed to have such a lovely mother and father. After this service, go to your mommy and daddy and say, mommy, daddy, I love you. Hug them and kiss them and tell them, Mama, Dada, you did not bring me up like a big pocketer. You did not bring me like a butter drug addict. You did not bring me up like a road Romeo. You did not bring me up like a gangster. But you brought me up like a child where I could confess in the midst of so many uncles and aunties that Jesus Christ is my Savior. What a blessed mama and dad are you have. You might not have realized in your life. But today, having realized that God blessed you with such a wonderful mommy and daddy, I request the parents of this conference, if you are here, kindly stand. The parents of this conference, I request the rest of the congregation and including the conference to kindly give a big applause to these. Really, you are great parents. Mothers, you are great mothers, fathers, you are great. Today, 
what God has assigned you the day you give birth to this lovely children. Your responsibility, you are full with it. You are not simple, ordinary parents. You are extraordinary parents. In this smart world, where social media is influencing so much on your children, you are influencing them much more than that. For them to decide in their life to accept Jesus as the Savior. God bless you. Be seated. Children, I would love to say today, when I was a small child, even now my mama, she is 89 years young. And I always make it a point wherever I can really. I travel sometimes even 700 kilometers to just go and spend few minutes, few hours, at least one meal with my mother. All the way I travel. And sometimes I sit and chat with her. Even if she's 89, I don't know, young ones, how much time you spend with your lovely mommy and daddy. But I chat with my mom and we have fun, we talk, we laugh, we smile. She reminds me of my childhood things and one of the things that she always reminds me is, son, when you were a small kid, whenever I asked you, when I used to ask you, to do something, immediately what you would ask me is, what will you give me if, you, if I do this? This is that naturally everyone might have gone through this. Today, children, you have given your life to the Lord. You might be thinking, I gave my precious young life rather than giving to somebody. Rather than giving to something in this world, to cherish something, worldly things, I gave my life to Jesus. What will Jesus give me? Yes. He assures you three manifold blessings. The blessings are from the God, Old Testament lesson that was read to us from Ezekiel chapter 36. Verse 26, the blessing that God assures you that he will give you a new life. A new heart is, in other words, a new life. From today, you are going to experience a new life. God never gives a, you know, seconds. God never gives a used car or like that, as you hear sometimes. God never gives you something that is not usable or somebody has thrown it away. But God says, I'm going to give you something, whatever God gives you. God gives you not the good. God never gives you the better. He gives you the best. Because Jesus is the best one. So when God, God says, to Israelites thousands of years back, the same good Lord says, you have given your life to Lord, Lord today and having decided to live for Jesus and accepted Jesus as your personal savior, the Lord says, I'm going to give you a new life, a new heart, which nobody can ever give you. Your parents could give you birth. But if you go and ask your mommy and daddy, mama and dada, give me another year, add another blessed year to my life, they get another. Nobody can ever sell this, nor you can buy this. You go to the biggest shopping mall in Chennai, you will never find a shop, a shop where it, can, it says new life is sold. What cannot be bought, what cannot be sold, what nobody can ever give you in this world. Jesus assures you that he is going to give you that new life. And with verse 27, the second blessing the Lord says, I am going to put in your life something. That is, the Lord says, 
I will put my spirit in you. That is the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes in you, the evil spirit will leave you. Young ones, no wonder. The evil spirit is always haunting you, tempting you, driving you to dark places, to do so many things that brings disgrace to your lovely mommy and daddy. That evil spirit makes you to say so many painful things. When evil spirit was in me, I disowned my own mother who gave me birth. I did ask my mother, are you my real mother? Are you the mother who really gave me birth? When the evil spirit was in me, I did make my mother cry and cry. But then when the spirit of the Lord came into me, for more than 30 years, I and my mother, we lived together. Though she is 89, I love her now. Because the Spirit of God has come into me. Dear young ones, the Lord says, He is going to put that Spirit in you. The Spirit that can lead you to the still waters and to the green pastures. The Spirit that can make you experience every new day brighter than the day before. That spirit will enable you to witness as a child of daughter of Jesus and a child of Jesus. And the third blessing that you see in verse 28, Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 38, 28, it says that, you are my people and I am your God. You may be nobody, but today, some today, you are a daughter of Jesus Christ. You are the son of Jesus Christ. When I was young, 19 years old, I was nobody's child. I was a given up child. I was an unwanted child. My own mother and father, my brothers. Everybody prayed that I should die. But when I became the child of Jesus, today you all know what I am. An unwanted child. When I became the child of Jesus, not only by my mother I am a wanted child today, but I am mostly wanted in the entire Church of South India. We want to experience that. Let's say, I wish and pray that. Confidence. May the good Lord give you that blessed life who blessed me on this beautiful day that you are come from. God bless you all.